Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you this absolutely stunning set of puzzles called the Gradient Therapy Series by the artist Soonness. So this series was available in a Kickstarter earlier this year, which of course I had to back. And I was super excited when they turned up at my door recently. Um, so I believe the idea behind the Gradient Therapy series is sort of to like evoke a feeling of calmness and de-stress through sort of the experience of puzzling and also puzzling these beautiful relaxing gradients. So yeah, I think that's just a really awesome idea and one that I can totally get behind. Um, also what's interesting is that this artist has another series of puzzles, but they're to me completely different. So they're like sort of nature settings featuring like really adorable and cute little cartoon critters. So yeah, it couldn't be more different, but yeah, I, I really love her other series and I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy this one as well. I mean, how can I not? It's beautiful rainbow gradients. So there you go. Um, so in a minute, we'll have a closer look at what each gradient is like. Um, then I'm planning to sort of choose one that we can unbox and have a look at what's included, what the pieces are like, and also piece that one together. So let's get started. All right, so let's take a closer look at the three puzzles in this series. So first off, I just wanna say, it seems like um, that the front and sides of the box are not the actual puzzle image, but they're sort of like a bit of a hint as to what the image is about or the feel of it, I guess. So you'll see what I mean in a sec. So the first one's called Magic Box. And yeah, so it's got this lovely, gorgeous gradient. It's sort of got some pastels and then even some brighter colors. But the actual image is a sort of giant 3D, like not exactly cube, but like a rectangle, um, which I think looks really cool. Um, yeah, so I guess the gradients that feature on the front and the sides of the box kind of are the gradients that are used in this image. Um, but yeah, I think that's really cool. And um, just letting you know that this one's a thousand pieces and 50 by 70 centimeters, which I believe they all are. So I guess that means for this particular one, um, it's going to actually have some of this more, I guess, pale, like off whitey, pale pinky beige color as like the background. Cause I'm guessing it's not going to be like a shaped puzzle. It'll be still just your standard rectangle. Um, yeah, so I guess that's sort of interesting to note. Um, but yeah, apart from that, there's not too much to say, except I think this looks awesome. Like it looks really such a gorgeous, like set of colors and gradients. And I love that it's 3D. It's really trippy looking at it from this angle. It's kind of like messing with my eyes. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun to put together. And I kind of like that it's a gradient, but it's actually three gradients in one. So like, you can kind of like work on each section it kind of makes the puzzle a bit easier i guess well i'm guessing so so yeah i think it's going to be like fun to do so definitely different like this one and also the other two are like definitely different to any gradient puzzles i have in my collection i don't have anything like these so which is kind of ref refreshing because i've got quite a lot of gradients in my collection now and sometimes they're getting a bit becoming a bit samey um so I've actually sort of have to stop myself from buying new gradient puzzles if they kind of look similar to what I already have because to me it sort of gets to the it kind of becomes like what's the point but with these these are so different and just they just feel really special and really different and interesting so yeah I think these are a great addition to my collection if I do say so myself um, yeah so definitely looking forward to this one so the next one um, this one's actually sort of has a lot more of a hint on the, the front and sides of the box. This one's called Sky Love. And yeah, so you can probably guess what the image is based on the box design. It is a lovely striped gradient uh, rectangle. So yeah, um, I really like this. The colors look awesome. Um, I kind of like that it's these big chunky gradient strips, which again, you can sort of approach the puzzle in like these sec like different sections um yeah it kind of makes it a bit more like approachable and easy to do i guess and yeah it just looks really cool again very trippy on your eyes if you're looking at it from different angles um 
I'm guessing with this one, because it's already a rectangle, it probably won't have the pale background. I'm not too sure though, it might. But yeah, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, just, again, pretty different to anything I've got. So looking forward to this one. And I think it'll be pretty fun and relaxing to do. So yeah, I really like it. And then the last one in the series, um, this one's called Jelly Bean. And so once again, the colors used on the front and sides of the box sort of give you a hint as to the actual uh, puzzle image. So this one is, well, as the name suggests, a jelly bean. And I think this one's so beautiful. Like I really love the gradient in this one. Like it's really rich and vibrant. Um, I mean, the others are too, but some of the, these two are a little bit to me more pastel, which I love as well. But yeah, I really love how sort of strong and vibrant the gradient in this one is. Um, and yeah, I just love the shape. It's like just such a fun kind of organic shape. It almost looks a bit 3D because of the, the way the gradient is made in it. Um, yeah, and again, because this one's a thousand pieces, I'm guessing like it won't be a shaped puzzle and that it'll actually have this pale color as the background, um, which actually this one might end up being, I don't know if it's gonna be, which is gonna be the easiest or hardest but this one could be a bit tricky in that if it's got this pale background, depending on like the piece shape and fit, it could be a little tricky to sort of figure out what goes where. Um, so I just sort of have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really cool. I really like it. And I think we just need to take a moment to also appreciate just how aesthetically pleasing this series is. <laughs> I like can't wait to put these on my puzzle shelves. I think they're just gonna look like super gorgeous. Um, yeah, I feel like it's the sort of thing that you can like definitely, you know, have on display um, or like if they're in a row, look really cool with the names down the side. Um, yeah, or just displayed on, from the front. Like I just think it would look super nice. Yeah, so I'm ex super excited to do all three, but for today we'll just pick one. Um, so yeah, in a minute I'm going to pick one of these and we'll like open it up, take a look at what's included and have a look at the pieces and then I'll get puzzling with it. So I've chosen to go with the jelly bean puzzle. Um, I just really like the shape of it. It just looks really appealing. I really like the other two as well. So it was kind of a hard decision as to which uh, puzzle I should do today. Um, but yeah, so let's just have a quick look at the packaging and what's inside. So yeah, it's just a really, um, just a nice size square box, pretty sturdy, kind of a like matte linen finish. So yeah, it just feels really nice quality. Um, I love the simplicity of it, like it's just this gorgeous uh, like wrap around gradient, which is the, I believe the same gradient that features in the jelly bean shape. And so you've got gradient therapy, just, it's just super nice and minimal and simple on the front. And then one side says jelly bean, and then you've got a blank side and a blank side. And then the other side has the cute little soonness logo. So yeah. And then on the back, it's again, pretty simple. It just has Jelly Bean, the name of the puzzle. You've got the puzzle image. And then, yeah, what else we got? Oh, I guess like this puzzle piece here is sort of like the size and the style of the puzzle pieces. Just the, you know, piece count and the size and yeah, just a bit of other info here. So yeah, let's open it up. There we go. Okay, and then this is cute. Inside it's just, it says, mmm, the joy of finding out different flavors of jelly beans. The unknown is exciting. Enjoy the unknowns in life. And has a little love heart. So I think that's just really cute. And the inside of the box, it's not white. It's like a really pale, like gradient. Yeah, so that's just a really cute little message in there. Okay, and it looks like I did not need my handy scissors because something that I love it's got a reusable ziploc plastic bag so I just think that's awesome it saves me having to like put it in a bag later and it's like less plastic wastage so yeah I think it's cool so we'll have a look at the pieces in a sec and then it looks like we get oh that's cute so we've got a little postcard of the puzzle image so yeah literally a postcard which I think is cute. I don't know if I like, I don't really send postcards that much, but with things like this, I like to just stick them like on my wall or like in a little frame and put it on my like desk and things like that. So yeah, I definitely use stuff like this. So it's a nice little addition. 
And then the inside of the box just has the Sunus logo again, which is cute. So yeah, so goodbye scissors. Let's open up the bag and have a look. Yep, super happy about this. Just it pleases me. All right, so ooh, smells good. Does anyone else like sort of like the smell of like a fresh puzzle? I guess it's like when you open up a magazine or a book and it's sort of got that nice cardboardy paper smell. Like, I don't know, I kind of like it. Maybe it's a bit nostalgic or something. Anyway, so these are, well, they smell good. Um, yeah, so these are like, okay, pretty standard shaped pieces. Um, I guess like what's on is it no no i have the box <laughs> the little piece that was shown on the back of the box yeah that seems accurate as to sort of the size and style of the pieces um yeah so they're very sort of standard um they don't seem like skewed or anything doesn't seem like there's any weird cuts just i guess your standard i believe it's a ribbon cut um yeah so very yeah very standard shape and size um, and then in terms of like what they're made out of, well, they seem to be a really nice cardboard. Like, I guess the back is sort of just like a gray board sort of thing. Like there's no extra paper layer or anything like that. Um, and then as for thickness, they're not the most super thick cardboard I've seen, but they seem like a nice, they don't seem super thin either. They sort of seem like a nice in-between thickness, I guess. Um, they're, I guess a little bit bendy, like you can bend it. Like I don't want to bend it too much, but not like not like ridiculously bendy just a little bit so you, you could bend them um, but they seem still pretty sturdy and like pretty strong i don't think they're gonna like bend on their own sort of thing and then as for like the top it's just again like a sort of matte linen finish sort of similar to what the box feels like um, and definitely looks very low sheen like there doesn't seem to be any gloss or sheen on it at all so yeah that's really cool and yeah, and just looking at the pieces in the box, they just look really pretty, like very pastel-y candy type colors. Um, yeah, I always like that with rainbow gradients. The pieces just always look so pretty. So yeah, I don't think there's like too much else to say. Oh, um, yeah, looking at the bag and yeah, there doesn't seem to be any puzzle dust at all. Like there doesn't seem to be any dust residue in the bag and Looking at the bottom of the box, there's a teeny weeny bit, but really like nothing to write home about. Yeah, so barely any puzzle dust. So yeah, I think that's really awesome. Um, yeah, so I think in a sec, I will grab my puzzle board and um, get talking about how I'm gonna start putting this together. So I have got my handy puzzle board out and I'm ready to sort of start figuring out how I'm gonna go about this. Um, so I've also realized that my largest reference picture is actually on the bottom of the box that has my puzzle pieces in. Um, but I think like for this style of puzzle, especially this particular one in the series, like the little picture on the postcard is big enough. Like there's no details in it. It's a, it's a gradient, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. Maybe the striped um, one might be a bit more like difficult to see, but even that, like it's still pretty chunky stripes. So. But yeah, just something to note, I guess. So looking at this, I've actually realized that the pale background, it's not just sort of an off-white, it's actually like a gradient itself. So the top is pale pink, and then it goes to sort of a yellow, and then a pale blue. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. I didn't really realize that on the back of the box. Um, so even though like it is gradiated, and I can see, like I can definitely see some of the, you know, border pieces in here so you know you've got distinct blue and pink I still think I might leave it till later just because well aka okay, put it in the too hard basket and do it later because even though it is gradiated you're still going to have a lot of pink to deal with and a lot of blue and there's no details so yeah I think that might might prove a little like time consuming and tricky so I might actually yeah push that aside forget about it for now and do it later and instead actually just focus on the jelly bean shape. So for no other reason really than I like these colors, I might actually start with the sort of bluey purple section and then maybe do the pink and go from there. Um, 
I always seem to have issues doing the green and yellow sections. For some reason, they always seem to be the hardest ingredients. I don't know why, it must be something about the tones of the colors. So yeah, once again, I, they might get pushed to the too hard basket and do those later as well. Um, yeah, so let's uh, start pulling out some of the kind of blues and purples, I guess. I've also just found a piece actually that um, is sort of, I guess, well, I guess you can, I'm gonna find a few pieces like this where you've got the essentially the edge of the jelly bean and then going into the light background. So I don't know if there's gonna be any border pieces that have any jelly bean on them. I'm not too sure. There might be too much of a gap between the jelly bean and the border for that, but find out, I guess. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just pull out all these sort of, yeah, bl uh, blues and purples. Ugh, I've got to like, multitasking is hard, trying to talk and sort. <laughs> because um, I like nearly started pulling out border pieces which I didn't really want um, yeah and these sort of split pieces are kind of confusing me a bit so I guess I'll sort of put them like a purpley pile and more of a blue pile that probably makes sense I guess except it's hard to tell which pile to put some in because some are sort of very in the middle bluey purple but that's not too much of a problem they definitely feel nice, like they just have a nice sort of matte feel to them, um, which I quite like. And yeah, like I said earlier, I really like the colors, like they're just really pretty, very sort of pastel-y, candy-like. They almost feel a little muted actually, which I don't mind, like, yeah, they look pretty. Now I'm conf oh, okay, I'm getting confused by like the pale blue of the background, it's sort of throwing me off. Yeah, so I guess I'll just, yeah, keep plodding along and try and pull out as many um, like distinctly blue and sort of purple pieces as I can. And then I guess, yeah, just start trying to put them together. Um, I'm hoping it won't take too long. I really don't know. Um, it's gonna be sort of interesting doing like a gradient shape, uh, you know, as opposed to just a solid rectangle gradient. Um, but I guess the same sort of like, I guess technique or strategy would apply. Like I don't see why it would really be that much different. So yeah, just gonna do what I usually do and see how it goes and see how difficult the sort of, uh, like I guess transition from blue to purple to pink is gonna be, um, yeah. So I guess I'll see you after some sorting and puzzling. So it's been a couple of days since I last worked on the puzzle and as you can probably see, I actually got a lot more done than I was expecting. Um, basically I was just 
having a really good time with it and just found it difficult to stop. So I guess that's a good indication of a fun and enjoyable puzzle. Um, I think so far, including sorting, it's taken about two and a half hours. So pretty quick so far. Um, I kind of figured this puzzle and even the other two would probably be fairly fast puzzles to do. Um, yeah, and the as for the piece fit and quality, I've really enjoyed it so far. Um, I found the pieces fit together really nicely, um, not too loose, not too tight. Um, yeah, you can even like pick up <laughs> like a lot of the pieces without them falling apart, but you can also still like undo pieces pretty easily as well. So that's really good, like just a nice balance. Um, so I guess you can expect a puzzle pickup later. Um, and I've probably only had maybe one or two false fits in this entire section of puzzling. So that's pretty good. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I really like that this has a very like nice matte finish. Um, yeah, there's been zero glare or any zero reflections. So that's super helpful when working on a gradient, just so you can see the colors like as they're supposed to be like. Um, yeah, there's nothing worse than trying to see the different tones of the pieces and having like to sort of bend your head around to try and see the proper color instead of just reflection. So yeah, super helpful having this as a nice matte finish. And yeah, there's pretty much zero puzzle dust, maybe a few little specks here and there, but like almost non-existent. So that's really good as well. Um, so. Also, I actually did some of the border. I didn't think I would. I thought I'd like leave it all till last. But, you know, I just on a whim decided to have a go. And actually, it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. I guess this pale blue section just didn't have as many pieces as I thought it would. So, yeah, it wasn't too hard to do. Um, so I'm hoping that's the same with the rest of the border and background, that it won't be too difficult. Um, there is a bit more sort of pale pink at the top because that's where the jelly bean is a bit more narrow so that might be a little bit more tricky but um hopefully it won't be too bad so yeah so in a sec i'm gonna get back to puzzling and hopefully finish this and then we'll come back and have a few like a bit of a chat about final thoughts that sort of thing and how the whole experience has been um yeah so i guess i'll see you after a bit more puzzling So I'm back and I finished the puzzle and that last section took about an hour and a half. So uh, all up, I'd say the puzzle, including sorting, took around four hours, which I guess is fairly reasonable for a 1000 piece puzzle. I did expect that this puzzle was going to be fairly quick to do. Um, but yeah, I definitely found that last section the most sort of, even though it was only an hour and a half, it still was the most sort of slow going and like challenging to do. Um, the gradient in the jelly bean itself is like really quick to finish but it was all this sort of pale yellow to pale pink section that was the sort of time consuming bit um just because like with this pink section especially it was just so hard to tell the piece color apart like it was virtually impossible to me under this lighting anyway so yeah i basically had to just go by piece shape um, but that's fine um, but yeah apart from that i just i love how it's turned out 
just so gorgeous. I love the richness and vibrancy of like these like bright gradients in this jelly bean. They just look super nice, it's really pretty. Um, I think this would look super cool, cool, like displayed on your wall, like framed and hung up. I think that would look super, like be such a cool talking point in your house if, you do, if you're that sort of person who likes to frame their puzzles afterwards. Um, yeah, so super glad I got this one. And as for the sort of experience and like with the piece quality, that sort of thing, um, as I said earlier, yeah, the piece fits really good. It's very comfortable. Um, it's really nice quality. So the pieces fit together um, just really well. Like it's not too loose, not too tight. So you can like pretty much pick up the whole puzzle and, and like large sections as well. But the pieces will come out pretty easily too. So you don't have to worry about damaging the pieces when you go to undo the puzzle. Um, and also, yeah, speaking of rubbing my hands over it, it has a very like nice matte linen finish it's really smooth and just yeah because of that mean it means that like well not only is it nice to touch but it meant there was like zero glare or reflection so i didn't have to worry about you know struggling to see the pieces um yeah it was a really good experience and i guess the last thing is that there's pretty much no dust like my hands feel a little bit dusty but it wasn't an issue at all when puzzling I didn't find myself sneezing or anything like that. Um, yeah, so really happy with the quality and just the experience overall. And of course, I love the artwork. It's just so pretty. Um, yeah, so would I recommend this puzzle and the Gradient Therapy series? Totally, I definitely recommend this. Um, if you're a lover of, you know, rainbow gradients and, you know, or you're just looking for puzzles that are just more maybe just a bit more simple and like relaxing. I definitely recommend this one and the other two. I just think it was just such a satisfying and like relaxing experience doing this puzzle. And I think the other two would be very similar um, and they just look great. Yeah, I felt like Gradient Therapy was a good, is a good name for this series because, because this puzzle is like not too complicated. It was relatively quick and easy to put together and, but it was still fun and relaxing and yeah, really satisfying seeing the gradient sort of come to life. Um, yeah, so I, di I guess I did feel like a sense of calmness and relaxation doing this. And, you know, I felt like my mind really was sort of just focused on putting this together and I wasn't worried about other things going on. So yeah, I think gradient therapy is a great name and these puzzles really are a sort of type of therapy and they look gorgeous. So I also, um, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I backed these on the Kickstarter. Um, so if you missed out on the Kickstarter, obviously don't worry because from what I understand, these are actually available on Amazon at the moment, along with the other couple of puzzles by Soonness. So I'll make sure I link that down below. Um, yeah, so you don't, don't freak out if you didn't back the Kickstarter, you can definitely still get these. Um, yeah, so I guess let me know your thoughts on this puzzle and the others in the collection like did you do you really like this have you done any in the series um you know do you think you'd find it relaxing and calming as well or would you find you know do you hate gradients maybe you find them annoying and stressful i don't know i guess let me know your thoughts and experience and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles and for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore juby. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye. Ta-da.